Hello, I'm here to review Drag Race Holland Season 2, Episode 1. Now, as I review a lot of the different Drag Race shows, and my videos are getting longer and longer and more waffly, I'm going to try and do this series, 5 minutes, 5 key categories. First up is the production. Now, this one's a bit different to Drag Race España because RuPaul keeps popping up, which feels a little bit odd to me. It's almost like a parent who doesn't quite trust the babysitter, so they just keep phoning to check everything's okay. I mean, it's not bad, but it just feels slightly like the ghost of RuPaul is hanging over, watching the whole thing. Maybe like the Eye of Sauron. Is the workroom filmed inside a light bulb? It's so bright in there, and that color pink is like, it pierces my eye. The whole thing is like, a migraine in pink. Now sound issues. This has happened on a few of the franchises where the confessionals sound like they were recorded in a well. All these things are quite slight and don't really detract too much from the show. I mean, I think it's forgivable, but not ideal. Queens, well, there's 10 of them in there. Quite hard to get a handle on who everyone is just yet. I warm to Reggie B, the first one in there. Also, I can see how someone might note that there's a lot of conventionally good looking lads in the confessionals that I'm too Classy to say that. The queens are also a little bit older than usual. A lot of them in their 30s or 40s. And I think this is good for the show because I think when people are a little bit older, they're more grounded, more sure of themselves, less likely to care what others think. So you're more likely to get colourful, genuine personalities there. The Countess also made a big impression on the walk through. Vivaldi reminded me of Ugafeo from Drag Race España, just visually. No? And I like that Tabitha was the more old school drag queen who I always like to see on these shows. Awkward moment. Onto this weird situation with Vanessa, who's a trans woman, and it's highlighted in almost this self congratulatory, wow, look what we've done, way. But it's then question if it's fair that she's taking part. Fred, the host, turns to Tabitha and says, Do you think she has an unfair advantage? This all felt off to me, almost like they were forgetting that Vanessa is a person, not a topic. Talent show and runway. Okay, so the talent show felt a bit ho-hum to me because at this point with so many franchises, we see a lot of these skills before, like pole dancing, people miming to their own singles, etc., etc. What did stand out, I guess, is the Countess doing the piano, though I would have suggested you know, obviously that's a skill, but if there was a way to heighten it or make it more camp or add something a bit more ridiculous on top of the skill, that would have really made it pop. Keita Minaj's magic trick felt original for Drag Race. That one also shone. In general, it was all okay. I thought that Reggie did really well, but then it was the runway that let her down, which I get onto. The runway was like uh, nightlife. So there was a lot of Club Kid references, Studio 54 references, a lot of references to Lee Bowery. So I'll make another video about Lee Bowery explaining who that is and why the influence is so strong, etc. There were a few shaky looks in there, but overall the standard is really high. Yeah, it was pretty good. Judging and the story. Now this is the awkward bit. The judging panel was not a highlight for me. That's what I'll say politely. Now this might be lost in translation, but I felt the comments felt a bit snooty and cold and a little bit mean. It felt a bit like the mean kids in school. I didn't get that warm vibe that I got from Drag Race España so much. To be honest, the panel was such a low light for me that if I didn't like the queens so much, I wouldn't continue watching the show because it didn't leave me feeling warm and uplifted. It left me feeling like, oh, Grubby? Like, you don't want anyone on your first episode to say this. Will I uitleg over your costume? Nee. Vind je laarzen mooi? Nee. Voel gewoon van binnen. Shit. And story-wise, there wasn't that much crafting, really. I mean, we were highlighted that Juicy was um, a look Instagram queen who may be weak when she first came in. That was highlighted twice or three times by other queens through the episode. And then in the end, that's what she was. So there's not really a flow of story. It's just a flat line. I did think in the final two, Reggie and Juicy seemed to be friends. So story-wise, I would have highlighted that much earlier on and have Reggie, instead of being dismissive of Juicy, be supportive of her and maybe hope that Juicy doesn't go home. And that would have lent the lip sync much more emotion and made it more of a moment. Overall, I really liked all the queens and I'm interested to see what happens with them. The panel was a definite big miss for me. Anyway, I'll be interested to hear what you think about it. Please leave comments below and subscribe for more. Thank you so much.